You're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rasnak. In partnership with Prey Debut, the Women's Musical Club of Winnipeg presents mezzo-soprano Camila Montefusco in concert. The Brazilian-born, Canadian-settled performer presents a program of songs based on the folk music of Canada and Latin America. To hear more, I'm joined by Camila now. Welcome to Winnipeg's Classic 107. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Camila, you, you were born in Brazil, just outside the most populous city of Sao Paulo, where you completed an undergraduate degree. And before we get chatting about that and a number of other things, I want to start off by asking you about this holiday you went on to Canada. Uh, it turned into a bit of an extended stay, didn't it? It certainly did. Um, it was not in my plans. Uh, <laughs> I did come to Canada to visit my family. Um, I was already starting to think about singing and thinking about um, grad studies in Canada. I was saving money uh, in Brazil at the time, but I had a career as a violinist back there. I was playing in the orchestra and I had a job to go back to by the end of the holiday season. Um, what happened is that once I arrived in Canada, um, I started talking to my family about the possibilities and we found ourselves just wondering like where can we start looking for information or connections right when you're brand new somewhere so my aunt had this crazy idea which was to send an email to the new classical fm here in toronto because she knew one of the shows uh, one of the co-hosts of the shows were um was Jean Stilwell and um, my aunt was used to you know just listening to to this radio show and she was like well Jean Jean is also a mezzo soprano just like you maybe if we email the radio and ask them to forward to Jean uh, just asking for information we just want to know where to start you know uh, the worst that can happen we won't get an answer and that's okay and I thought that was the craziest idea ever, uh, but I was like, well, you know what? We have nothing to lose here. So she sent this message to the radio. Four days later, Jean replied to us and invited me for coffee. And she was like, well, um, if you wanna meet and chat, then let's do that and I'm happy to assist you with the next steps. So that's how everything started and I got connected with my teacher, my vocal coach, and the rest is just story. Yeah, yeah the power of radio. Who knew? Uh, what 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 year was that, uh, Camilla? That was in December of two thousand seventeen. Yeah, like five years ago, and. Since you arrived in Canada for this extended holiday, you've uh, completed a master's at, at Western University. You're now uh, part of the Rebanks Family Fellowship and International Performance Residency Program at the Glenn Gould School. Um, you've been here for five years. You've certainly found success here. What does that mean to you and, and your career at this point? Um, that means I made the right choice when I switched. You know, it was a big big leap to go from a professional violinist to, oh, I want to sing opera and just be a singer. You know, uh, there were so many questions in my in my mind at the time. And it took a lot of courage to leave my family, my job, my friends back in Brazil. Um, I miss all of that so much, but I was able to start a life here and I had all these wonderful opportunities that I wouldn't have back in my in my home country, you know, so um, I'm just so happy that all of that happened and um, I don't regret not even for a second because I know I'm doing what I love and that's a big privilege. Well, uh, we're looking forward to having you here in Winnipeg. And just before we chat about what you're going to be performing in Winnipeg, I, I want to just quickly return to Brazil for a moment um, and talk about your earlier years, because you've sort of alluded to this, your your past career as a violinist. But just before that, you come from a musical family, right? That's correct. Yes. So tell My us about those early years. Yeah. Yeah, my dad is a pianist. He just never uh, got to have a career as a pianist that wasn't possible. But he is the musician I admire the most. Um, and he was the person who helped me throughout you know, my, my entire life and uh, my practice. And 
even just as a child, you know, growing up with music in my in my house all the time. Um, so that was a huge influence I I I had in my life. And I am grateful because I feel that that did make a big difference. Even I see the um, the just the result of that in my current life. So I'm grateful for it. Um, you started off, as you said, on the violin. You kept with it for years, completing a, an undergraduate degree in, in violin performance. You had a job as a, a violinist. So let's go back to this this sort of itch. What inspired the, the the change? I mean, you could have continued with that career, continued to pursue it. Why not only uh, change locations and countries, but why change instruments too? Yes. Yeah, so started when I was playing in the pit for opera productions. Um, that was something I was not really uh expecting to happen i couldn't predict it but once i was there and i had singers singing right next to me i i felt the the overwhelming power of the human voice and that was shocking to me as a violinist i always felt very comfortable in the orchestra in a group but suddenly i felt this urge to be on stage as a singer um, because singers have words, they get to tell stories with words, which is something I didn't have as a violinist. We have other things as instrumentalists. Um, and I think these two worlds just, you know, came to, they just collided and suddenly I, I have all these tools to communicate with my audience. Um, I, I want to touch on one thing. So often we hear from instrumentalists that they're inspired by the human voice, right? In terms of the sound that they produce, um, shaping phrases, musical gestures, that kind of thing. But I'm wondering for you about the opposite. How do you think those years spent with the, the violin under your chin and, and, and bow in hand, how do you think that influences your singing? That Does it? Oh, it does. Um, usually when I work with someone for the first time, they know nothing about my background as a violinist, they always ask me, they're like, did you, did you study an instrument? And then I explain, I'm like, yes, I was a violinist for many years. They're like, oh, that makes complete sense because there's just a sense of musicality and a phrasing that it all came from a, a strings instrument right legato and you know just connecting melting one note to the next one uh all, the sense of phrasing and um direction it all came from you know being a violinist and that that is just there i didn't realize in the beginning um i think i almost took it for granted but if i feel really, really grateful that I had this base, you know, to get started as a singer. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're just tuning in, I'm chatting with mezzo-soprano Camila Montefusco, who performs in Winnipeg this weekend with the Women's Musical Club of Winnipeg in partnership with Prey Debut. Uh, Camila, have you ever been to Winnipeg before? No, this will be my very first time, and I'm super excited about it. Uh, and we're excited to have you here and bringing a little bit of Brazil to the prairie. Uh, this uh, program inspired by folk songs of Canada and also Latin America. Can you tell us a little bit more about the program you've, you've put together? Absolutely. Yes. So this program specifically for uh, Winnipeg, I want it to be a program about storytelling in song. So I'm bringing some of the pieces um, I, I started working on with my pianist Jolanda, um, many pieces that are drawn from our heritage. So we have um, quite a few sets about uh, Latin American uh, music, culture and history. But we also have a set um, by Amy Beach, as an example, you know, which is part of the new music I discovered here um, in Canada and in North America. And all of these songs are telling stories, which is the biggest passion of my life. So I just wanted to make sure um, I I would share this with with the audiences in Winnipeg. Well, uh, looking forward to hearing that story. And, and it's been a pleasure hearing your story, how you came to Canada, literally found a new voice as a, as a musician and really excited to have you here performing uh, as part of the Winnipeg uh, Women's Musical Club of Winnipeg uh, concert season. Um, 
concert takes place at uh, the Winnipeg Art Gallery, 2 p.m. on Sunday. And, and Camilla, just before I, I let you go, um, we've got a little track queued up. We're going to hear some of your singing. W what are we going to hear? Well, um, this is a song I grew up with in my house. Um, and at the time, I just felt like it was this warm hug. I didn't quite understand. Nowadays, coming back to it as you know, an adult and as a, a singer, I just um, understand this song is about the beauty and the simplicity of love and nothing brings you closer to home than this feeling. I mean, it sounds beautiful. Uh, can, can you introduce, what, what's the song called? The song is called Acalanto da Rosa, and the translation would be The Rose's Lullaby. That sounds absolutely beautiful. Uh, Camilla, thanks for taking the time to, to chat with me this morning. Thank you so much. My pleasure. <laughs>